Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh hi everybody, what is going on, it is Gale Riot here, welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Danmachi Memoria Freeze video, and today we are going to be taking a look at the 6th anniversary once again, and more specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the fact that the 6th anniversary is of course Sword Oratoria 12. Now, I know I already spoke about it a little bit in yesterday's video, which you guys can go and check out if you haven't already, but of course, in yesterday's video, I was quite disappointed to say the least i was pretty disappointed and of course um you know at the time it was just my first reaction of course now i've had a day to kind of reflect and think about it a little bit more and i'll be very real and say i'm still a bit disappointed but of course i can see the more positive side of things as well at the same time and of course i had the opportunity to also read your guys's comments of course right and not gonna lie I mean, I'm feeling a little bit more positive about the fact that Sword Oratoria 12 is the 6th anniversary, but that doesn't change the fact that I am still quite disappointed. So today what we're going to be doing is that I'm going to be taking a look at both sides of the coin. I'm going to be starting off with the negatives and the reasons why we are, as a fan base are disappointed with Sword Oratoria 12 being the 6th anniversary. And on the flip side, I'm going to also talk about why it's a positive thing. Why is it a good thing and why are people happy about the fact that the 6th anniversary is Sword Oratoria 12? So we'll tackle both sides of the coin and then I will kind of summarize my feelings towards it at the end of this video once again so of course if you guys want to enjoy this one please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more danmachi and danmachi memoria freeze content and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below you know i know that the first reaction by everybody was definitely a little bit more extreme a lot of people were very happy a lot of people were very disappointed has that feeling changed or you know is it still the same let me know in the comment section down below i'm very curious to see what you guys have to say in the comments now i know that for a lot of people right now you know you're feeling one way or another but i'm betting you guys that by the time the sixth anniversary actually drops right or even when we get to the down mimo fest stream right on the 13th of june i think once that opening theme hits along with the new characters and then the trailer and everything people will get hyped up but of course like i said there will be still an element of disappointment for various reasons and i think we'll get into those reasons right now with you know no more dilly dallying let's get into the topic at hand and of course let's talk about why are we disappointed? You might be wondering, right? Of course, Sword Oratoria 12, you know, I've always said it. You know, every time we've had a Sword Oratoria story, I've always said that I would love to see Dan Mimo adapt Sword Oratoria 12, right? And considering this is their last hurrah, why am I disappointed about that fact now, right? You know, considering I've been saying for a very long time, Sword Oratoria 12 is amazing. It's probably one of Omori Sensei's best written works, right? So why am I disappointed? Well, my disappointment primarily, and this is my personal opinion, right? My disappointment primarily stems from the fact that Don Mimo was never set out to be a Sword Oratoria sort of like factory, basically, right? It was never set out to be the adaptation, the main adaptation source for Sword Oratoria, right? It was never that. Yes, it became that over time, right? With all the adaptations it was doing for Sword Oratoria. But if you take a look at the first year and a half, two years of Don Mimo, that was never the case. Dan Mimo was originally set out to be Omori Sensei's playground, and all the anniversaries since then have reflected that, right? Of course, we did get Sword Oratoria before the first anniversary, technically, but at that time, Sword Oratoria was brought into the picture because of the fact that the year before, we had the Sword Oratoria anime come out. So that's the reason why we even got Sword Oratoria in the game at the first point. You know, when we got Eyes episode and Lafia episode, if you go into the main story section, under events and you know challenges or whatever it is called in the bottom right when you go and click on that and you go to the story section you have main story i story lafia episode uh main story chapter or new new story chapter whatever it's called and then you have episode re right we had eyes episode and lafia episode then and then after a year and a half two years when they realized that okay sword oratory's anime is never coming back at this point let's see if we can adapt all the source materials right then we got that new chapter thingy basically in the bottom left right so sword oratoria was never the main agenda for dan mimo at the beginning the beginning was it was supposed to be amori sensei's playground if you look at the previous anniversaries as well and that's what we're primarily going to take a look at if you take a look at amori sensei's uh, you know anniversaries grand day it introduced us to the behemoth alternative of course it was the alternative version it wasn't the true behemoth but we got introduced to the behemoth one of the three great quests right then we of course had argonaut which went took us back to the age of heroes 
probably Amori Sensei's best written work, to be honest. I think a lot of people would probably agree with that. Then we, of course, went to Astraea Record, which was obviously unbelievable considering it added so many more plot lines, which obviously ended into maybe potentially some plot holes, but it was still amazing to see all these plot lines develop thanks to Astraea Record. And of course, being so close to the main timeline that we are in right now, the present timeline, of Danmachi's main story. It was insane, of course, right? And we saw characters develop in Astraea Record, you know, the Loki familiar, the Astraea familiar. You had even members from the Freya familiar be, you know, showcasing their amazing skills at this point in time, right? Seven years ago, showing how they developed as characters. And then, of course, in the fourth anniversary, we got Ada's Vesta, which obviously was an alternate universe story, but it also showed us what Amori Sensei was planning with Danmachi in another dimension effectively right this was one of the other endings omori sensei had planned for danmachi so seeing this come to life was also something amazing because it showed us that omori sensei has so much written on the sides that we haven't even seen potentially right and then of course last year we had the knights of fiana which was of course set up to be the sequel to the argonaut story and we had all of these stories for the anniversary year in year out and they were all unique and special in their own way right for the first anniversary non-canonical story but gives us an insight onto one of the three great quests right argonaut and knights of fiana giving us an insight to the age of heroes then of course a stray record recent timeline but a very important piece of the puzzle for the present timeline right it adds a lot of plot lines developing into the main series of course right and then of course Aedas Vesta, remember, okay, by the way, Astraea Record was done around the time of Volumes 12 to 14 happening, right? That's the reason why he did Astraea Record in Don Mimo, because of the fact that we had, you know, the Ryu and Astraea family being developed in the light novels as well. But then Aedas Vesta was also one of those stories, just like the uh, first anniversary, something that was non-canonical, but it also gave us an insight into something completely different, you know, Epimetheus and everything. It was something that was very different, but very unique as well. So when you come over to the sixth anniversary and it's just good old Sword Oratoria 12, something a lot of Danmachi fans have probably read in light novel format, it ends up becoming a little bit disappointing because it's just like, well, I've already read this. It's nothing new. It doesn't add anything to Don Machi because it's something I've already seen. And we'll talk about the whole story and the additional story content that Amori Sensei is probably going to write for this later on in the video. But, you know, as a fan, as a as somebody who's been, you know, looking forward to this last hurrah from Don Machi and the fact that they even said in the letter, this is a battle that you have probably imagined, a large scale event that you have probably imagined. Well, I mean, I've seen this already. You've, you've, you've shown this to me in the light novel format. I get it that they were probably teasing this as something that maybe people haven't seen, especially if those who haven't read the light novel. But... It could have probably been phrased another way, in my personal opinion. The way it was set up felt like it was going to be something else entirely. And I guess that's... I, I have only myself to blame for that potentially, right? But, you know, I feel like there could have been so many other alternatives. In fact, if they really wanted to stick with Sword Oratoria, you know, we'll talk about Albert, Arya, and Zeus and Hera in just a second, right? But looking at it from a perspective of okay if they wanted to do sword oratoria 12 or they wanted to do it something related to sword oratoria and we'll come on to that point as well later on in the video because i have a point to make regarding grand day and the sixth anniversary together at the same point so we'll come on to that in a moment but if they really want to do something sword oratoria related right why not do sword oratoria 12 during the pre-anniversary right set it up in the pre-anniversary and then just like ada's vesta make it an alternate ending. Omori Sensei could have easily done some sort of alternate ending for the 6th anniversary and instead of, uh, and it could have just picked up from where Sword Oratoria 12 left off, right? It would have made a lot of sense and it, I think it would have been amazing. I think it would have been genuinely amazing if he did something like that basically because I think, it, one, it would have still done the whole Sword Oratoria 12 thing first and foremost. We would have still tackled Sword Oratoria 12 but the second thing is that it would have been an original story as well. It would have been an original story as well. We could have probably seen other characters be introduced and everything. It would have been sick, right? But of course, that's not what happened. I think it would have been a great alternative if they didn't want to tackle Zeus and Hera and of course, Albert and Arya. And let's get on to them now. That's the other disappointment, of course, right? Is for a last hurrah, you know, maybe showcasing us Zeus and Hera. I didn't expect Albert and Arya, to be quite honest. 
I know I mentioned it in a couple of my videos, so I'm not backtracking on any of that. I will admit that I did say that Albert and Arya is possible. But if I had to put it as like percentages, right? I, I think it was like 70% of me was thinking it was going to be Zeus and Hera. 20% of me was thinking Sword of Retoria 12. And then 10% of me was saying Albert and Arya. Because I thought Albert and Arya are too interwoven with Danmachi's uh, Sword of Retoria series. As well as the main series with the One-Eyed Black Dragon, right? It's too intertwined. Whereas Zeus and Hera, while they have their own intertwining fate with the One-Eyed Black Dragon. Especially because it's very recent as well. It felt like... Zeus and Hera were never gonna make an, a reappearance. At least Hera wouldn't, right? Zeus may still make his reappearance because of his connection to Bell, but Hera was very unlikely to make her reappearance. And in fact, Omori Sensei, well, Omori Sensei has been very contradictory regarding Zeus and Hera at times, right? Sometimes I hear him say that Zeus and Hera is not gonna show up in the main series at all. He says that only once the main series is done will I do something with Zeus and Hera. Or he says that I will do Zeus, but I will never do Hera. I feel like people have ha seen all these messages from Omori Sensei, so it gets very confusing in that regards, right? And he is a young author as well, and he's still developing the Danmachi storyline. So it's understandable that, you know, his thoughts are continuously changing when it comes to certain characters like Zeus and Hera. But I think this would have been the perfect opportunity to introduce Zeus and Hera, as well as probably introduce their familiars and show us one of the three great quests. I thought it would have been the Leviathan for a very long time because, you know, first anniversary was the Behemoth, end off with the leviathan makes sense we'll never see the one-eyed black dragon but that makes sense because they're leaving that for the main story right whereas in the game you could just do the leviathan because we'll probably never see the leviathan in the main story or in sword oratoria so why not just chuck him in there right chuck him in the in don mimo it would make a lot of sense we could see poseidon's familiar as well we could see the education district as well and it would make a lot of sense because these are the storylines that are you know currently being developed in the main story anyways right we're seeing the education district being the next arc of the main story and of course sword oratory 13 tackles the education district so it would have made a lot of sense right but of course that's all we got of course right uh, that didn't happen and then of course when we saw the last hurrah and it's a la large scale event i thought oh maybe one eyed black dragon would also happen but of course that didn't happen either but things like that those were the ideas we had of course again you could say that we have only ourselves to blame for thinking that these things would happen but I feel like it would have been much better to be quite honest it would have been much better but yeah those are the reasons why I feel like we don't really get together with the fact that uh, SO12 is the sixth anniversary story I think it's a bit disappointing that that's the case but not only that I don't think it's just the fact that you know it's not an original story the second reason is that Sword of Retoria 12 while a large novel don't get me wrong it's a large novel it's not the same size as Astraea Record in its entirety or Argonaut in its entirety. Uh, I'm sorry, Argonaut is two light novels long. We know that because it's coming up literally. The light novel releases are happening in a couple of months time. Astraea Record is three light novels. We've known that because they literally released three light novels last year. And so... I am very confused as to how they're gonna do SO12 in a four part span let's say let's say three to four parts let's say three parts right i don't understand how they're gonna do that right i don't get it we'll have to wait and see of course and we'll talk about them adding more stuff to the sword oratory story in just a second but i don't know how they're gonna even pad that much it's insane to think that they're gonna try and pad so much content into sword oratory 12 it's gonna be very interesting to see how they tackle it and i'm very curious to see how they do it to be quite honest it's gonna be very interesting and um yeah i would say those are the main negative reasons why sword oratory 12 is a bit disappointing for the sixth anniversary it feels a little bit lazy it feels a little bit like okay we have not nothing else to do we can't get a mori sensei to write us a proper proper story um you know because he's busy with whatever he's doing right now with all the other Darmashi light novels which we'll talk about in a second but it, it it feels like that way i mean even the logo i'm not gonna lie if you take a look at some of the other logos that we've had for uh don mimo's anniversaries they've been a little bit better in my personal opinion uh rather than it being just the, you know eyes and the fear but yeah that, that's just obviously one of the a, a big reason why we feel that don mimo going down the sword oratoria 12 route for its sixth anniversary is a bit disappointing but like I said, I've been thinking about it a lot more and of course I've been reading a lot of comments that you guys have been putting in the comment section of yesterday's video 
and i want to take a look at it from a more positive look uh in all honesty i want to take a more positive look towards sword of Retoria 12 being the sixth anniversary now the first point i want to make is i like the fact that they're doing sword of Retoria 12 in the game at the very least just generally as well not considering the fact that it's the anniversary or anything the fact that they're doing sword of Retoria 12 is great i love the story it's probably one of omori sensei's best works so seeing it adapted in danmimo is going to be fantastic it's going to be brilliant honestly i would love to see everybody's reactions to the story i'm going to be reacting to it live on stream i will actually be playing the story on stream so you guys can see my reaction to it and of course see what i think about sword of Retoria 12 live as well but no just the fact that we're getting sword of Retoria 12 after the you know sort of like cliffhanger that they did for sword oratory 11 is brilliant i'm very very excited for that and i'm very excited to see how people feel about sword oratory 12 as a story generally speaking the other good thing is that there is going to be additional content which is going to help the story hopefully at least right i mean that's always the hope that additional content will help the story there are times where additional content cannot help the story but in this situation i'm hoping that that's the case i'm hoping that it helps the story um i expect to see potentially some you know uh, other povs maybe we're gonna see you know the hestia familiar play a more prominent role because they do play a role in sword oratoria 12 but it definitely didn't it felt very you know tacked on in the main in sword oratory in a way i w i will say um I, I don't think it was that bad but of course you know some people may feel like it was just tacked on effectively so maybe a more expansive role for the Hestia Familia can be seen in the upcoming 6th uh, anniversary. I think it would make a lot of sense, right? But also, on top of that, right? If you take a look at a, what happened two years ago with Ada's Vesta, right? Um, obviously, if you guys take a look at the logo here, this is part one of Ada's Vesta, by the way, right? Um, this was part one of Ada's Vesta. And if you take a look at the logo, which is cut in half for you guys, I do apologize about that. But it was only Hestia at the start. And then as part two came in, it flamed out into Vesta. And then, of course, we had Artemis come in and everything. It was just crazy, right? It started evolving as it went along, right? As the parts came along, it got way, way more interesting. Initially, it was just like, well, really, is that, that's it? That's, that's kind of it. It's very possible that, that it might be a fake out as well. Who knows? The 6th anniversary part 1 might be Sword of Retoria 12, but then we might start getting some flashback sequences and other things as well, which will cause the logo to evolve as we go along right as we go along the logo might evolve so that's also something to consider and something for us to look forward to potentially is that because they're adding a lot more and the fact that they have to cover three parts there is a good chance that there might be a lot more than we believe maybe sword oratoria 12 is only 40 to 30 percent 30 to 40 percent of the sixth anniversary maybe the other 60 percent is something else we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So there is that little bit of, I guess, copium, you could say. I am inhaling a little bit of that copium that it could be something else later down the line. But yeah, I mean, it's very possible. It is very, very possible that that might be the case. Another good positive, I would say, is that at the end of the day, I also feel glad that Omori Sensei gets a little bit of a break. As I've said earlier on, Omori Sensei has been writing, uh, you know, all these light novels. He's been, you know, publishing a light novel for Dan Machi every month since october so and he's going to be doing that until september as well right so the fact of the matter is that he's going through a lot of work and it's one of the reasons why we have seen such a slowdown in the content for dan mimo and i guess that's also one of the reasons why he, they decided at the dan machi memorial freeze development team to kind of just stop new stories because one it helps Abori sensei kind of relax a little bit and two you also have these other gacha games coming along where he's also going to have to divert some time too to help them you know get promoted and pushed forward into the spotlight as they are newer danmachi games basically right so it makes sense in that regards as well now of course you could say that those are just excuses or whatever but you have to remember you know take a look at some of the japanese mangakas you know they all have various health problems so I'm glad that Amori Sensei is taking his uh, break from Dan Mimo at the end of the day. I'm glad that it's 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 they're not pushing him through more stress of developing a completely brand new original story and going from there. Now, the only issue with that point, I will say, is that a couple of years ago, he did say that he had everything up until the sixth anniversary ready. So I'm very confused as to what he said for the sixth anniversary. Was he just joshing and he was just like oh you know i, I was just uh, i'm just messing with y'all i'm just gassing y'all up for no reason basically sixth anniversary is just as a 12 I, I had planned that for a very long time ago 
but who knows who knows right i don't know it might be the case it might not be the case i don't know um so yeah that's another thing as well is just like the fact that amori sensei can get a bit of a break from you know just writing a lot of danmachi and he can just focus on himself potentially or do Vistoria maybe as well right i think it makes a lot of sense the other reason why i think it's a very good positive and i think sixth the sixth anniversary being sword oratoria 12 sword oratoria 12 makes sense i just mashed all the words together for a split second but the reason why I think that it's also another positive is it's a full circle in a way. We started off with the first anniversary with, of course, the Behemoth alternative. But the story was also a big focus on Belle, Lafia, and Eyes. And now we're coming to the sixth anniversary and the focus is on Eyes and Lafia. Obviously, as I said, I expect Belle to feature heavily as well in the, uh, in the Sword Oratoria story. We'll have to wait and see how they handle it. But it's going to be great to see, you know, it just being a full circle of like... We started off with Belle, Eyes, and Lafia in the first uh, anniversary, and we come all the way back to Belle, Eyes, and Lafia once again. You know, it just is a full circle. So that's great. I think I think it's fantastic to see that happen. Um, it's going to be very interesting to say the least. And also on top of that, this is a book that features so many familiars coming together. So it's going to be very very nice to see like this one sort of like grand scale war actually you know what advisor lorne um another don machi youtuber you guys should go and check him out if you haven't already he kind of stated that sword oratoria 11 was sort of like don machi's infinity war and sword oratoria 12 is the end game for don machi right it, it is in a way i i kind of agree with him on that regard so yes it's going to be a grand scale event and i can see why they touted it as a large scale event it's definitely going to be very very exciting to see how people react to that and it's going to be very very exciting to see it being voiced in game that's another thing being voiced in game and the performances will be exceptional i believe i do believe that it's going to be fantastic but yeah i think there are positives i do also think there are negatives and generally speaking i will say i'm still a little disappointed about the fact that sword oratoria 12 is the sixth anniversary but i think as time goes on and of course like i said once we see that trailer once we get the opening theme once we get the units themselves and we see the changes they made to the story i think i'm gonna get a lot more hyped up and i'm gonna get a lot more excited but yeah let me know what you guys think of course it's been a day since yes uh you know the announcement yesterday i want to see if your guys's thoughts have changed since then or if they've stayed the same um let me know in the comment section down below thank you guys so much for watching this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys next time take it easy everybody Bye bye